like to follow up on our Afghan girl video from the end of last month. I know there's been a lot of talk about it. First, I want to point people to the original video at stp.io slash Sharbot. It is now back online. And if you look in the description, you'll see a link to very detailed sources for every statement that I make in the video. There's a lot there to unpack. You can also find those sources at stp.io slash Sharbot sources. I also want to once again mention the charity that we're promoting for this, sahareducation.org. We gave all of the money from our sponsorship of the previous video to them, as well as some extra, and I know many of you gave. They personally wrote me a note, and they were very, very thankful. It's going to help a lot of people in Afghanistan, and if any part of this story moves you, if Sharbat's story moves you, please give a little bit to Sahar Education, because there it can do a lot of good. I want to reinforce that this is a story about Sharbat Gula. Our original story was about Sharbat. This is also a story about photojournalism. There was no lawsuit. There was no slander. And I want to be clear, we did contact Steve McCurry's team prior to publishing the video. We also contacted National Geographic through, through different, two different outlets. Neither one of them got back to me. Uh, Steve's team says that they did not receive the email. And that happens, right? We took the original video down a few days after we published it, and that led to a lot of speculation. I can clarify exactly why we took it down. I received a forwarded email from Bonnie McCurry, who is the president of Steve McCurry Studios, and I think also his sister. She, in that email to a third party, indicated that she had found some factual errors in the video. And we take this really seriously. Like I said, I reached out to them ahead of time to try to clarify things and didn't hear back. But now that they were communicating and they indicated they found something wrong, I wanted to get that corrected immediately. And if we were spreading misinformation, I didn't want to spread it any further. After a great deal of research, going back and forth with them, we stand behind almost every part of the video. We did find one thing that we want to correct, and I'll do that in just one second. We're committed to the truth. We are not perfect. Like everybody else, we make mistakes, but our commitment is to do our best, and when we do make mistakes, to correct those mistakes. We will always do that for you. Bonnie, in her exchange with me, brought up three things that she felt were incorrect in my original video. This is a quote from Bonnie. Much was made about Steve not seeking permission from Sharbat's father. Sharbat traveled to Pakistan with her grandmother because both her mother and her father were dead. My source for this is a BBC article by Dawood Azami. Dawood's source is an actual conversation with Sharbat as an adult. To quote the article, her mother died of appendicitis in the village when she was eight. Like hundreds of thousands of other Afghans, her family, her father, four sisters and one brother, migrated to Pakistan. Point number two that Bonnie brought up, while we cannot and will not speak for Sharbat, to characterize that she had nothing else to be afraid of that day except for Steve McCurry is, in our opinion, a strong mischaracterization of the broader context against which the photograph was taken. Moreover, she has never stated that she was frightened by Mr. McCurry or that she felt pressured to expose herself in a way that made her feel uncomfortable. My take on this is that she was in a schoolhouse, in an all-girls school, having a fairly normal day for her, and that's why I say that she didn't have anything to be afraid of. But to have a foreign man suddenly enter the room is something that would be kind of scary. The characterization of her being afraid comes from the cover of the magazine, Haunted Eyes Tell of an Afghan Refugee's Fear. We do know the answer to what Sharbat was feeling that day, according to Sharbat, in 2002, Sharbat told National Geographic in this article, she remembers the moment. The photographer took the picture. She remembers her anger. The man was a stranger. According to Sharbat, she was feeling angry. Point number three that Bonnie brought up. It is inaccurate to claim that Steve requested that Sharbat take off her burqa. She was not wearing one. I agree with this point. I believe that I made a mistake when I said that uh, she was wearing a burqa in 1984. The source I had for this said that she had removed her burqa for Steve to photograph her, but that source was referring to the 2002 photo shoot. This was my mistake. So to clarify, this seems to be the way that Sharbat was dressed in 1984 when Steve began to take her picture. A burqa would have also covered her eyes. That's the difference. The outfit she was wearing revealed her eyes, but covered her face. At the time, she was in a private room filled with only girls. It was a religious school for girls. So it would be common for her to relax a little bit 
and show her face since she was among only girls. Steve entering the room changed that dynamic, and what we can tell from the photos and from Steve's story is that she wanted to cover her face in Steve's presence. Let's talk about Sharbat's feelings both then and now, because most of my video focused on what she was feeling at the time. I wanted to see what the girl in 1984 and 2002 was feeling being the subject of photojournalism. But at the end of the video, I bring up all the good that the photo had done over time. And I want to emphasize that Sharbat, in hindsight, feels that her initial anger and fears were worth it. Here's a quote from her. At first, I was concerned about the publicity of my photo, but when I found out that I had been the cause of support slash help for many people slash refugees, then I became happy. The good from the photo seems to have outweighed all the bad, at least according, according to Charbat. Now I am very happy that it gave me honor and made me popular among people. The income from the photo has helped a lot of widows and orphans. Now I am proud of it. When you watch the original video, you'll see that Charbat didn't feel this way the entire time. But it seems like in hindsight, she appreciates the greater good that it did. Now I want to answer some common questions. Was this a hit piece about Steve McCurry? Absolutely not. This started out as a very positive piece about this picture as we were going to recreate it. And as we looked into the history and we discovered the way that Charbat felt in that moment, we decided there was no way we could recreate it. And in fact, I felt the responsibility to share her feelings and put it in the context of photojournalism in general so that hopefully the community could learn from it and maybe we could make a change. Why didn't we initially list all our sources? In the initial version of the video, you'll see we only had a handful of sources. That's because as I started making the video, everything was very positive. I was only going to try to teach the lessons from Steve McCurry. I hit some tipping point when I realized, oh, I can't do this piece the way I want to do it. There's a lot of negative about how that original picture was taken, and I definitely would not want to replicate it. At that point, I started tracking my sources a little bit closer, but at that point, I had watched so many hours of videos and read so many interviews. I had all that information in my head, but I didn't keep careful track of all the links. If you look at the sources now, you'll see that I went back through my history and found all the videos and articles that I read, and now everything is linked up. It's important that you know that everything in that video had a source, however. Why was the initial video sponsored? The initial video was sponsored because if I sponsored it, I would be able to give more money to Sahar Education. We had planned to give anyway, and we had a video available from Squarespace. And I said, hey, if I make this a sponsored video, I can now take all this money and give it to the charity. I've seen other YouTubers do this, and it seems like a good way to put money to good use and do more good than I would have if it hadn't been a sponsored video. Squarespace is really, really nice in that they give us a lot of flexibility over our content and they support a lot of creators who make heavier, more serious content. We're all photojournalists and I want to ask how we can all do better. If you travel and you're taking pictures of the locals, now you're sort of doing that role of every National Geographic photographer. You're communicating to the people in your circle something about a faraway land that they might never see. And I think there are a lot of responsibilities here because you are teaching people about that culture. You might be teaching them something right or you might be teaching them something wrong. And as I've reflected on this, I've realized that as I look back at my own travel photography, I've also made mistakes and I've taken pictures that I myself wasn't proud of. So I wanted to toss out some guidelines that I've thought of, but also open it up to a bigger discussion. Point number one, don't bend cultures to your aesthetics, ideals, or stereotypes. Point number two, choose subjects based on their story and not just solely on their looks. Point number three, if a photo is photoshopped, staged, or posed, declare it. It's okay. You can create art. You can create images that reflect what you want, but be sure that you're honest about that. Point number four, if you make money from an image, the proceeds from images, especially of the poor, should benefit the poor more than they benefit the photographer. How can you do better? I want to open this up for discussion. How in the past have you not reflected the values of a person or place? And in the future, what things will you do better? I would like this to be a learning experience for everyone as it has been for me. And if you have any follow-up questions, just add a comment down below. Also, I want to add, 
I'm wearing glasses because I got something in my eye and I can't put my contacts in right now. I, I know there's going to be a lot of wild <laughs> conspiracy theories about me putting glasses on. Thanks so much for watching and thank you for your support.